Hey everybody, this is Brent Arnold. Today I want to talk about geolocation. Alright, so what is it? Well, geolocation means that you're working with the GPS, right? So, most mobile devices have a GPS or some way of returning uh, location based on Wi-Fi hotspots or based on cell phone triangulation or using an actual GPS. Now, the way it works with Flash, you have the ability to receive information based on any of these methods, and all of that is kind of separate. So, in other words, when you use the geolocation class, you don't know whether it's GPS or whether it's Wi-Fi triangulation or whatnot, although you do get some information that gives you a hint as to and basically what they call an accuracy. So, what we're looking at um, I'm here in Flash CS 5.5 and I've got this set up and I've actually written all the code and I figured I'd just walk through it rather than type it up while I sit here because there's a whole bunch of it and I'm lazy and besides you guys never watched the whole video anyway you just want to download the app so let's get to it alright on the stage I'm set up for an iOS I'm uh, 320 by 480 so I'm in portrait mode we got this text field here, and it's a status. In this text field, I got results. In this button, I got a get geo, and then here I have this map holder. So the premise is, and notice I've got instance names for all of these so that I can reference them in code. So the way this app works, I'm going to check to see if I have access to a GPS. I'm going to click the get location button, and then it's going to ping the GPS or whatever the geolocation unit is and it's going to receive information and we're going to load a map. Alright, let's click away from here. Let's go to the edit class definition and we want to open it in Flash Professional. Alright, so the way we start out is we need to create a geolocation object. So I've got a private variable here. I also have a loader object and the reason for that is I'm going to load in an external map and I'm using the Google Static Maps API, and I'll cover that in a second. So first things first, we say, hey, if geolocation is supported, then let's uh, create the geolocation object, add an event listener so we can get a status update to see what uh, the status of the geolocation object is. Otherwise, if we don't have geolocation, like you're running on your desktop and it's, you know, or a device that doesn't have it at all, then we want to do something else and so in this case let me let me pull this out here so you can see it set it up a little better there we go okay so notice you remember on the stage I've got a geo results text field text area so I'm gonna say oh you know what sorry it's not working don't feel bad here's a cool map then I call this mo this uh, method load map. Uh, otherwise, then I I add a button. This is my get geo. That's my button. I'm adding a click handler for that. All right. So if I click the button, then I'm going to update status, which is click. And then if the geo exists, if the geolocation object is created, meaning we know it's supported, then we're going to say attempting to connect. And then here's the money maker right here. Set requested update interval. Now the way this works is you can ping the geolocation object every however many milliseconds. And as it pings the uh, GPS, it will return an update event. So this is set right now at a half a millisecond. And that's actually a little fast. Uh, but the purposes for our development, I'm not worried about it. Keep in mind, though, that if you are pinging the, G the GPS multiple times per second, it's going to eat up battery life. So really keep that in mind. Uh, you could set this to, you know, every five seconds. It really depends on what it is that you're trying to attempt. For our purposes, uh, I just want to call it and get a result. Sometimes it takes a second or two for it to find location, and so, you know, getting it to wake up, stuff like that. All right, so that's if I click the button. Now, 
Let's talk about geolocation status. There's one thing if, if sorry, let me scroll up here again. Um, is supported says that this device will return geolocation information using, you know, GPS, Wi-Fi, cell phone, any one of those. But that's all that says. It says that this device can do that. Notice that um, if you've ever used like on your iPhone where you <clears throat> you click on an app and it says, hey, do you want to allow location? Basically what's happening is it's one thing to have the ability to use geolocation, but it's another thing to actually have it turned on or having the, you know, having the application allowed to look up location information. So the way that works is there's this status and the status is either muted, it's unmuted, it returns a value, meaning if this is unmuted, then that means the GPS is on. If it's not unmuted, that means it's off. And, and so we're getting this reference that, hey, geolocation is not turned on. Now, on iOS devices, it will automatically prompt you, and I'll show this here in a second, but it will automatically prompt you if the geolocation is not on, it'll say, hey, why don't you turn it on? The app is requesting that you, you know, requesting location. So that will do that for you. On Android, it behaves a little differently. Basically, you should prompt the user if, you know, if it's, if it is muted, then you should uh, do something that says, hey, you know, turn it on, whatever. All right, so that's how that works. That's the geolocation status. Now, remember, we get this update. The update here returns information. If we get a result, we get a series of information. And here's all the information. And I'll talk about this once we get this running on the device. But for now, what we're looking for is we have a latitude, a longitude. We have an altitude, we have a speed, we have a heading, and we have horizontal accuracy and vertical accuracy. And this is what I meant uh, when I was saying, you will get a value that tells you how accurate the location is. So the horizontal accuracy would say, you know, in meters, uh, how close to the actual device that it's able to return. And that will give you a general idea of whether or not you have an actual GPS or not. Uh, because, of course, if you have GPS, you'll have a, a much narrower uh, value, you know, much closer accuracy. So that's what that means, vertical and horizontal accuracy. And this will all make sense once we get the app running. Now I have this function called load map. And what's happening is I want to load a map based on the lat and long. And then once that happens, I'm going to read, you know, I'm going to remove this event listener. Then load map takes a lat and long, latitude and longitude string. And if it doesn't exist, then we just pass in null. And the reason for that is, remember up here, I said, hey, if the geolocation does not available, it's not supported, then I'm going to load a map anyway. And the map I'm going to load, this one, I say, hey, if LAD is null, then uh, load this. And it happens to be the Adobe Max Conference Center, you know, where the conference is this year in LA. So with that in mind, let's talk about the Google Maps Static API. And you can go online, look it up, Google Static Maps API, and it's a free service. You don't have to be registered. Uh, you can work with Google Maps API, which you do have to be registered and something here to understand people don't understand this very much they don't realize this even though you're using something like Google Maps or some of these other map providers there are terms and conditions that limit you as to what you can do meaning how many times you can pull their service uh, and whether you need to pay a licensing fee so with static maps it's free, you don't have to be registered, but there are some limitations and it's, you know, they're pretty, you know, pretty generous with what you can do, but I wouldn't necessarily build an entire app around it. It just depends on uh, what, you know, the purposes are. For our demo, 
This works really well. Now a static map is just that. It returns literally an image. An image based on the latitude and longitude and other settings. So the way this works, if, if the latitude and longitude returns, meaning we get a value, then I'm going to create a marker and I'm going to give it a, a color and a label. And again, all this is on the Google Static Maps API website, which you can look up. Uh, just, uh, you know, Bing it or whatever. Bing it and decide. Isn't that what they say? That, uh, that was a joke. That was a joke. All right. So we call this URL and then we pass in center is the lat and long. And then the zoom, which is how close of a map, you know, whether street level, stuff like that. And that's this zoom value. And then a size. So if I look over here at my uh, stage, my movie clip here is 300 by 200. So that's where that comes in. I want a, an image that is 300 by 200. And then I'm going to add a marker to it. And then when it says sensor, this is important and this is a part of the API, you need to indicate whether you used a sensor to receive the information or not. So in this case, we did use a sensor and so we pass in sensor equals true. All right, now if we didn't get a valid lat long and doesn't work, then I'm going to load a, a static map of the uh, LA Conference Center. And so what I do is I passed in, here's the latitude and longitude specifically for that point. Here's another zoom. Here's a size, 300 by 200. And then I can even pass in other variables like map type. And then I have a marker. And sensor is false because, of course, I didn't uh, get the information from a sensor. I just requested it on my page. All right, so fairly simple. Let's go ahead and look at this one second. Now the rest of this based on the uh, call that we make to the web service. I'm going to create, I'm ba basically here's my loader and then I create an event listening for a complete event as well as handling, handling any IO errors. And then I'm passing in this new request and that loads it. Now once we get a response, say handle map response, then I'm going to remove these listeners and I'm going to say hey map retrieve successfully and then I'm going to add the returned object to the map holder. Then, of course, if we get an error, it says, hey, sorry, unable to, don't know why. All right, so let's do this. Let's run this app. Now, the first thing, let's go ahead and just uh, test it on the desktop. Press Control, Enter. And it's going to run it in the uh, ADL, which is the Adobe Debug Launcher. No, the Air Debug Launcher. So now it says re requesting map. So obviously on my desktop, I don't have geolocation available. So hey, don't feel bad. Here's a cool map to look at. And there's the return map. See, and if I click, you know, it doesn't do anything because it's not supported. All right, so let's close that now. Let's go over here, click uh, the edit application settings. And at this point, uh, we're set up for portrait full screen. Uh, we want iPhone and high resolution under deployment. Uh, go ahead and make sure you have your development license. Remember the password, you got your profile. Make sure this app ID matches your profile. And we're going to go quick publishing for device testing and go ahead and click publish. All right. So this will load. And it's publishing. La -ti da So, this will be done here in about 36 seconds. All right, remember, uh, if you're on a Mac, make sure you use Xcode, the organizer, because it makes it really nice to add devices. So I've got my uh, device connected. I'm sitting here at Applications, and I'm waiting for this. Waiting, waiting, waiting. It's happening. People are like, oh, thanks, Brent. Thanks for sharing. So anyway, um, the idea is when we test it on the device, we're going to see a couple of things. We're going to see whether we have geolocation running. And the other reason why, um, if we look over here, the other reason why the map may fail to load is if you're not connected to the internet. So make sure you keep track of that. All right, so that's done. So let me go ahead and 
open this geolocation example here it is here's the IPA and here's my organizer so we'll take the IPA file and we'll click it and drag it over to the organizer and this will install it onto the device now we'll click over to my cool little camera here and you'll see that the app is right here if I go ahead and click that then it'll launch now notice that it's, it automatically said hey do you want to allow uh, the app to use your current location and I'll go ahead and click OK uh, one thing to note that if you have locations turned off like if you don't use the geolocation on any other apps then it might prompt you with a little different one saying hey do you want to turn it on so just be aware of that and once it's prompted then uh, hey it says yeah it's on so now I'll go ahead and click and it'll say attempt to connect and <clears throat> excuse me and it gets the results and now it's requesting a map hey map received retrieved successfully look at that now if I go here I have some more text in my text field here so here's the information we were talking about right horizontal accuracy vertical accuracy so here you can tell and we're talking within meters so that's giving me an indication that I'm I'm really on a GPS and I've got a heading speed of course I'm not moving altitude and there's the geolocation now pretty cool huh all right so the way that works is let me just review what we did in the code so let's open this up one more time let's just do a quick review and then uh, you can be on your way creating awesome geolocation apps so of course we obviously check to see if it's supported if it is we create the object and we listen for a status if it isn't we can do something else in my case I load a static map then if we click the button what happens is we uh, set up the geo location object we want to request an update and on every update we want to get this call this event handler and when we get a result we're going to get a series of event of uh, properties and so I'm going to show that and then I'm going to load my map based on the latitude and longitude and the map I'm loading is using the Google statics static maps API so look that up you'll find it online without any trouble and then of course I just load that image once that image shows up I add it to my stage very good all right thanks for watching now go out there make some money and uh, don't forget who taught you how to do it <laughs>